Gents, how's it going? Ram and Gary here. For those of you that don't know, my name is Gary Pry. I'm a Tier 2 British Gallantry recipient, which means I received something called the Conspicuous Gallantry Cross, one below the Victoria Cross. Um, what I do is I watch some uh, videos of remarkable gallantry from all around the, the nation, in particular uh, the, the, the Five Eyes nations, United States, Canada, UK, Australia and New Zealand and, and pull out some remarkable kind of stories here. Today we're going to be looking at Marcus Luttrell. A bit of a channel update. Um, I, I've, I've been a little bit quiet lately. There's reasons for it. I'll hopefully be able to, to let you know. It will affect the channel in, in some way. It's good news, good news. So so hopefully I'll be able to let you know what's going on in the near future. So today we're checking out Marcus Luttrell. And his story in and around um, the the operation that sadly took um, all of his colleagues' lives. Let's listen in. I will be pausing and and, and pulling out some thoughts of myself. Uh, I think on this one, I'll be asking you guys some of your thoughts on it as well. Let's listen in. Tough one. Luttrell says the SEALs were surrounded. They hadn't gotten through on the radio, so he says Lieutenant Mike Murphy decided to move to a completely exposed position so he could get a signal on his satellite phone and call for backup. Mikey was out and pushed out onto this um, this boulder out in the middle of the draw, and this wide open, no cover, no nothing. He was on our satellite phone. Luttrell saw his lieutenant make the call, a call Mike Murphy knew would likely cost him his life. I've noticed this a few times whenever whenever Marcus is talking about this. Whenever you look at his face, it's it's like somebody who's intoxicated, glazed over, maybe not not really there as he's telling the story. I I have no idea if this was how Marcus looked before because some people just look like this here. Um but it it's pa it's painful to watch, isn't it? It's tough to watch. It's like he's distancing himself from this incident completely. And you can understand why we all know what happened off the back of it. But it is, it's it's like he's lucid, isn't it? It's, it's like he's not really there. It's tough. Life. I took two rounds to the chest because he, he spun like a top and it dropped him. And I, I tried to wait, I make my way up to him. You know, he's my best friend. And I, I'd already lost Danny. And I knew that Axe was dying. I didn't want to lose him. And then he started to crawl left. And I was out in the open, waving my hands. I was like, just come down to me. That's all I wanted him to do was just come down to me. And uh, I heard his gun go off and a lot of guns. They're, they're already an hour into this, this, this kind of situation that they're in. They had a soft compromise, so a couple of goat herders had had found their their unprepared observation post as, as we would refer to it so they had set up on the ground they hadn't really dug themselves in they spaced themselves out they were over watching a village hopefully uh, to see a, a high value target and they had had a bit of a soft compromise now there's a there's a couple of different areas i've i've read and i've i've heard about one was that they were inserted in quite a distance away and they 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 tabbed in as we would call it a tactical advance the battle into this position the other one uh, suggested the other the other kind of theory suggested that they were landed pretty much on top of the place where they were observing from which which is is a bit of a no no hence the soft compromise and the 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 the, the um the goat goat herders coming out now i'm do using inverted brackets here because I, I have a pal from the special forces community somebody who had sat on a bit of a an after action review and after action brief on this not not intimately with these guys and that assessment by that time it got to him was that this was absolutely a a recce screen this was a recce screen from the enemy forces um it was deliberate they were out looking for this position because they had heard the helicopter now now it's, it's tragic and everything but it, it just makes you think what 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 actions on do you have after the the compromise I, i've heard marcus say that they relocated 
um uh, and and in in my mind once you're compromised you're on that hill and you've released you've released these people i just think you need to get out of dodge you need to move as fast as you can i i suppose we'll never know we'll never know i all i can say is that if i if i was soft compromised in that position and i had released the 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 recce screen the the goat herders you just need to get you you need to get out of there you need to make as much ground as you can and if you don't have comms you get comms on the way you you move in a way that will hopefully get you comms i i think they absolutely done the right thing some people are really harsh and say that they they should not have released the 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 the, the guys that compromised them these are human beings and they're dealing with potentially young adults uh teenagers kids who who caused the compromise? I don't I don't know anybody who would have done anything else. You 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 gotta release them. You you can't. I've I've seen people on online saying they should have killed him, which in my mind, you, you know, I, it 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 doesn't even bear thinking about. It. Just just stupid in my mind. Could have saved lives, but you have to live with that decision afterwards, and it is just not an option in my head. You need to cover ground. You need to get out of there ASAP. You need to get comms to get that support in. If they did just relocate, it's 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 one of just many things that 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 caused lives on this day. That they, they were in a perfect storm. They were in a perfect storm, and there's nothing to say. Even if you did just make a beeline to get out of there, there's nothing to say that the enemy couldn't have outmaneuvered you because we Western troops we carry lots of kit. We carry lots of heavy kit. The locals are used to altitude. They don't carry as much. They carry a couple of mags and a, a rifle and they can move way, way quicker. There's nothing to say that they would have even been able to, to get away, even if they had just made a beeline for it. So, so many, so many things. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, sliding doors, all of that stuff. Don't want to judge them, but, but I just want to understand the situation. You know, right below if you, if you have any, any info, was it? What's your understanding? Was it soft compromise? Was it was it an actual enemy recce screen? Um, did they relocate or did they try to get out of dodge completely? Uh, I'll pin the comments for anybody with a, an in-depth after action review. I've not read into it since it, but but just my recollections. Gunfire in his area. I was trying with everything I had to get to him and he, uh, he started screaming my name. He was like, Marcus, man, you got to help me. I need help, Marcus that it got so intense that I actually put my weapon down and covered my ears. I've heard people being critical of him at this point as well. For him putting his weapon down and covering his ears. What I would like to say is, is he's been in an hour long firefight. They have taken, I think everybody's a casualty at this point. Everybody's a casualty at this point. If they've, they've lost one killed in action, he knows Murph's about to be killed. When you hear somebody you know screaming and and shouting out, that has an impact on you that that nothing can prepare you for. And and we can sit back and we can think that it will spur us on to do what is the right thing to go and fight that good fight and to go and assault that position. But human beings do not always react in the way we think we would. Human beings do not always react in a way we think we should. This, whilst, whilst it doesn't sound easy to hear, this is a normal response to what has happened around him. This is absolutely a normal response to what is going on. And... I could just never judge judge him for this. Absolutely never judge him without having been sat in that same position and experienced everything he has up to this point. You just don't know what you would do until you're in that place. You do not know. Because I couldn't stand to hear him die. All I wanted him to do was start screaming my name. And uh, they killed him. And I, I and I and I put my weapon down in a gunfight while my best friend was getting killed. So that pretty much makes me a coward. How can he say that? Say what? Why, why do you Why do you think that? Well, I think what? The putting your weapon down makes you a coward. Because that is a cowardice act. If you put your weapon down in a gunfight.
completely disagree. The fact you're there in the first place, you're not a coward. And I'd say humans are humans. We are fallible. We are not robots. You cannot program a human being. Uh, humans will react in a human-like manner. And and this is one of the, the responses. Um, we've probably all heard of an amygdala hijack, the, the fight, flight, the freeze, the flock. The fight is where you go towards the source of the threat. The flight is where you try to remove yourself from it. The freeze is where everything just stops working and, and you're you're basically a passenger in your body watching everything going by you. And the flock is where you kind of go towards your grouping, your herd. You feel like you have safety in numbers. This is a freeze response of an amygdala hijack and you can train and train and train for it but that part of your brain it's 20 times faster than the computing part all of the stuff he's trained for it's computing part it's all learned behavior it's all stuff that has been processed into that brain all that's happened here is the amygdala has reacted faster it's had such an impact on him this computing part of his brain has not been able to take over this is a natural response i hate I hate to see him being so tough on himself. You know, they, they, they say every man has his breaking point. I never thought I'd find mine. The only way you break a Navy SEAL is you have to kill us. But I broke right there. I quit right there. I don't know. Still, Marcus Luttrell says he managed to pick up his weapon and found Matt Axelson. The only Which just reinforces the fact that he didn't quit. He didn't quit. He had that freeze moment. He got control again with his cortex. He realized what he had to do. I need to pick up my rifle. I need to get it with Axel. And he went and he got with him again. It's this is this is just classical amygdala hijack. And I think it's really hard to judge somebody based on their response off the back of an amygdala hijack. The only other seal left alive. He was below me, and he had crawled underneath this rock overhang. And I crawled in there. I was looking. I was like, "We're gonna die, man. We're gonna die right now." You said that, Tax. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I made my peace with God a long time ago about dying. But most of the time, we don't know when we're going to die. They just shut our light off. And uh, it's a weird feeling when you know the Reaper's at the door. You know, Charlie, this is such an incredible story. I know you've, you've spoken with Marcus Luttrell before, as have I. And um, one of the most harrowing accounts early on in the war in Afghanistan, what our Navy SEALs have been through, that story is so incredible. What he's been through since on the road to recovery. Um, and the I'll, people who came in to help them who were also killed yes, on this mission. Right. Um, and now it's part of a, it's going to be on the big screen in Hollywood right. as people right. can learn more about that. Yeah, I think I need to do a few more follows up on this here. I didn't know how, how kind of uh, uh, how much of a, a fairy focused part of the story that was. So I think we've got a bit of a series come up here, um, but but an absolutely remarkable account. I think I think one of the big things off the back of this here is is that, that while special forces are incredible and the the job they do is remarkable, they're they're not superheroes and and bad things happen to them. The the minute the minute that that. Uh, uh, that you know we we hear these stories we we suddenly think that that can't happen they're special forces they're they're not they're not superheroes this is this is real for them and i i think this is just part one of of a couple of parts that that, that goes into fully understanding this story i think what we'll do is we'll do this part here which is a little bit about marcus the trail well we'll do a little bit about but um the other team members a little bit about who they were, where they were from, what happened to Marcus Luttrell after this, and I think Operation Red Wing that that that, that came in and around it. And yeah, let's let's make a couple of parts off the back of this year. I'll I'll bang these out quite quickly to to, to, to keep them in sync. Uh, ladies, gents, thanks for checking in. Please comment below. What's your thoughts? Was was Marcus a coward? I don't think so. I absolutely don't think so. And if you have any inside information, if you have any any accurate information, should I say, on, on, on that thing. Was it a recce screen or was it a couple of goat herders? And also, did they bug out of the position? Did they try to get out of there or did they just reposition in order to carry on with the mission? Um, Ladies, gents, uh, thanks for checking in once again. As I say, part two will come up quickly. I think I'll need to do a little bit of research on this year one. And I hope to see you very soon. Have a good day. Goodbye.